God, be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah, that they may be known upon the earth. Thy saving help among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously. The govern and government and govern the nation upon the earth. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. This reading was taken from Psalm 67, the entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and doing of his mighty word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, my beloved. My name is Trevor Israel. I'm coming to you from the Gospel of Jesus Ministries. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit comes in many forms. When you read in the scriptures, it depends on what you're talking about. The context of the verse that you're reading, that's how you interject the, the, the Holy Spirit which can be the breath, the words that you read from this book can be the Holy Spirit, and the angels is also the Holy Spirit. Because the angels are spirit, and the one that is doing God's will, of course they are holy. They have evil angels and they have good angels. Like for instance, Satan is an evil angel. Michael is a good angel. Gabriel is a good angel. Anyway, as I say, the breath that you breathe, that is spirit. The words that is in this book, it is also spirit. And the angels is also spirit. So it depends on what the context of the, the verse that you're reading, that's how you will know what, which, one, which of the Holy Spirit that is referring to. Anyway, this lesson is break up in three parts. Angels, the breath, and the word. And today we're going to be talking about angels only, not the word, not the breath. We're going to do that in another lesson, another time. But today then, we're going to be talking about the angels, which is also the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the angels, the Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. They are one of the same. Again, brothers and sisters, depends on the context of the scripture that you're reading. We're going to start this out in Genesis. We're going to start this lesson out in the book of Genesis. Back to basic, from the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2, we're going to read. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This Spirit of God is none other than the angels. The angel of God moved across the face of the deep. A lot of people have the misconception that <laughs> People have somebody living inside of them. Too often, you know, we watch movies and you will see like stories with um, people that is in the hospital or they passed away. And you can see like something is rising out of their body, like a, another person, what they, the dead person, the dead spirit is rising out of their body. This is none other than Hollywood, brothers and sisters. That is cartoon. That is not real. Is no one living inside of you. God's words live inside of you. God's breath is inside of you. That's the only thing that caused man to be mobilized or caused man to move. The breath. 
right? So it's not another person that is living inside of you. The only thing that you have inside of you is blood and guts. That's it. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews, we're going to read verse 7. And of the angel he say, who make it his angel's spirit and minister in flame of fire. So here it says, brothers and sisters, God make his angels spirit because their spirit, they can appear and disappear. And angels don't have blood. They're spirit being. Right? That's why they are able to disappear and reappear. Because they are spirit beings. They don't have blood. He make it his angel spirit and they also flames, flame and fire. Because angel, a lot of times when they appear unto some people, they appear to them in a flame of fire. And we're going to show you an example of that. An angel coming in the form of a flame and fire. Let's go to John. John 14, John chapter 14. Again, brother and sister, today we are talking about the Holy Ghost, but today we are dealing with angels only. The angels also are the Holy Ghost or the Comforter. This is John 14, we're going to read 15 to 19 and then 26. John 14, 15 to 19, and then 26. If you love me, keep my commandments. So this is learning something on the way to learning something. This is also in red. Jesus is saying, this is Jesus himself speaking. And he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So it's telling you clearly, brothers and sisters, if we don't keep God's commandment, uh, Jesus' commandment, God's commandment, we don't love him because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if we are breaking his commandments, that means we don't love him. It's simple. Apples and orange. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not. You see, it sees him so this spirit of truth is an entity. It's because he referred to him as him, right? The spirit of truth, who you cannot see because, who you cannot receive because you see him not. Neither knoweth him, but he know, we know him, for he dwelleth with you and abided in you. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me because I live in you, and you shall also live. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, you hear that? The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So remember, brothers and sisters, context. The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. So is this is an entity who is going to come in the name of Jesus. Because remember, these angels, they work for Jesus. Because God has a protocol. I'm going to read it to you a little later. God has a protocol. The Father give the word to the Son, the Son give the word to the angels, and the angels bring it to man. That's the protocol. Right? So that's why it says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, in Jesus' name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to the remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So whatever Jesus tells these angels to say, that's exactly what they say. The angels do not come speaking on their own behalf. They don't come speaking on their own behalf. They were created to serve God. These angels was created to serve God, to serve Jesus. That's their mission. That's, that's their purpose, to serve. The angel mission is to serve. That's it. Let's go to John 16. Turn, turn over to John 16. We're going to read 7 and then 13 to 15. John 16, we're going to read verse 7 
and then 13 to 15. 7, and then 13 to 15. Never, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So again, brothers and sisters, we keep referring to this Comforter as a him, an entity, right? Verse 13. How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, so he's telling you again, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. So remember, it's talking about an entity here. The Spirit of truth or the Holy Ghost. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you the things to come. He shall glorify me, for he, <laughs> for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. So remember, whatever Jesus tells this angel, that is the only thing he says. That's the only thing he allowed to say. Because remember, the angels speak first person. If whatever Jesus says, that's what they say. They cannot come on their own. They cannot speak of their own. They only do the will of their creator. Right? 15. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, said I, that he shall take of mine, which is the angel, and show it unto you. So the angel, who is the comforter, who is also the Holy Ghost, going to come in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to show you an example of that a little later. He's going to come in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost, or the comforter, or the spirit of truth, is the angels. Because remember, they are serving spirit. They are ministering spirit. They are created to serve God. Let's go to Revelation 1 and 1. I'm going to show you the protocol. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. This is the protocol, brothers and sisters. Listen carefully. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation or the revealing of Jesus Christ, which God the Father gave unto him, gave unto him who? Christ, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by unto John by his angel. So you see, right here is the protocol. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. So the Father here gave the word to the Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave the word to the angel, and the angel brought it to John, or the angels bring it to man. That's the protocol. Father, Son, angels. Man. Father, Son, angel, man. That's the protocol. Let's go. You see the same thing in Acts. Acts 7. Show me the same thing in Acts chapter 7. Acts 7 and 53. Acts 7 and 53. And we're going to read from 51 to 53. Acts chapter 7, 51 to 53. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ear, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. So this is Jesus <laughs> this is Paul talking, telling them these Israelites, which is us, that we are stiff necked because they always Jesus too always referred to us as stiff necked people. He always referred to us as stiff necked people. The reason why? Because we refuse to hear and do the word of God. That's why he always he called us stiff neck. So he said, You stiff necked and uncircumcised in the heart and in the ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. As the Father did, as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of our just one. 
of whom we have been now the betrayer and a murderer, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So you hear what he said? Who have received the law, which is the commandments, by the disposition of the angels. Because remember, the angels is the one, or they are the ones working for God. So we, they say we receive the law by the disposition of the angels. Because remember, brothers and sisters, the angels work for God. They are serving spirit or ministering spirits. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to read 5, we're going to read 8, 10, and then 13 to 14. Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to read 5, 8, 10, and 13 and 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. This is a question. He said, which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee? None of the angels. The father said this concerning the son. The angels never said this. Because the angels are just merely ministering spirit. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be unto me a son. So you see here, the father is the one that said, Today I have begotten thee. Thou art my son. Verse 8. But unto the son he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. So listen what the father referred to his son as. The father said, And unto the son he said, So this is the father talking to the son. He said, Unto the son he said, Thy throne, O God. So the Father is calling Jesus God. So why do we have a problem when we're saying that Jesus is also God? Jesus is not the Father. Jesus is the Son of the Father. But the Father referred to Jesus as God also. Because, brothers and sisters, he is also God. But he is not the God. The Father is God. The God, the Father is the highest. The Father is the most high God. Right? But Jesus is also God because he is in the God family. He is in the God family. And right at this minute, at this moment, we only have two that is in the family of God, which is the Father and the Son. In the end, we are all going to be in the families of God. God, then we are going to be spirit being. We are going to be you know, doing the things that God does, that Jesus does. But they are ultimately one God, meaning the Father is the head. That's why he's referred to as Elohim. It means one name, but is an entire family. Just like, let me give you an example, like um, the Lewis family. The Lewis is the name. Is one name, but there's many members in that family under the name Lewis. So that's what is referred to as Elohim, meaning one name with more than one members. Right? So God is the same thing. It's one name with many members. Verse 13 and 14. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? This is a question. None of the angels said that at any time. The father said that to the son. The father said to his son, Jesus, sit on my right hand until I make, <clears throat> until I make your enemies your footstool. Right? Listen verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So right here, verse 14, <clears throat> it said, The angels are ministering spirits who are sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. 
So remember earlier I told you, brothers and sisters, the ministering spirits or the angels or the comforter, they are created to serve God. They are ministering spirits. They are flame on fire. That's what they're created for. They're created to serve God. And in the end, when we are all spirit beings, they are also going to serve us. That's their, that's their purpose, to serve. Let's go to Exodus. Let me show you an example of them being flame and fire. I'm going to show you an example of the angels being flame and fire. We're going to read 1 to 5, 8, and then 13. 1 to 5. Exodus 3, 1 to 5, 8, and then 13. Now Moses kept the flock at Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flocks at the backside of the mountains. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. You hear that? The angel of the Lord appeared unto Moses in a flame of fire out of the bush. And he looked, Moses looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. So this bush Moses saw burning. Jesus was not in the bush. The angel of the Lord was in the bush. It just told you here. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flaming fire out of the midst of the bush. So Jesus was not in the bush. An angel was in the bush. That's why the bush was burning. Because the angels, they also flame in fire. Or they're consuming fire. They're fires. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that the, he turned aside to see, God called out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw not nigh, hither. Put off thy shoes off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. So, <laughs> listen how this this conversation is going. In verse, in, in verse 2, it says, The angel of the Lord was in the bush. In verse 4, it says, God spoke out of the bush. Why it says this, brothers and sisters? Because remember I told you, the angels, they speak first person. So if whatever Jesus say, that's the same words that they have to say. They do not come on their own accord. They do not come on their own business. They come on the business of Jesus. So when they talk, it's just like Jesus is talking. Whenever they talk, it's just like Jesus is talking. Because they talk first person. Whatever Jesus say is the exact same that they have to say. So it's just like Jesus himself coming, but it's in the angels. I hope you understand. Verse 8, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land, unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, so unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hebites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the, the, the Hittites, and the Jebusites. So, here he said he's going to bring them into a land because Jesus, the angel is telling Moses that God sent him to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. Because remember, we were in, our ancestors were in Egypt under bondage for over 400 years under Pharaoh, right? So the angel came to Moses because God is sending Moses on a mission. He needs Moses to go to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt from under bondage. And he said he's going to bring them into a land flowing with milk and honey. So a lot of people out there, they refer to Africa as the land of milk and honey. But 
This is talking about Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Perizzites. This land is the land of Jerusalem. Israel, or Zion, that is referring to Jerusalem. That is the, the land flowing with milk and honey. Because remember, that's where the mountain of God is. In Jerusalem. Right? This is the land that God promised Abraham and the descendants of Abraham for an everlasting possession. So that land where these people, the Palestinian and these so-called Jewish people fighting over, that land belongs to neither one of them. That land belongs to my ancestors, which is the, the Negroes, not the Africans, the Negroes. Because remember, we are not Africans. I have a lesson coming up soon. It's going to be a short black history lesson. And I'm going to show you, according to scriptures, that we, the Negroes that came over here in slavery, are not Africans. The African people never went into slavery. We are the ones that went into slavery. They are not us. The Egyptians are African. They were not in slavery. They were enslaving us. This is verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and you shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, which is Jesus. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus Shall thou say unto the children of Israel? That's what I should say unto them. I am has sent me unto you. So God said, yes. When they ask you who sent you to deliver them, tell them I am sent you to deliver them. So I am is Jesus, referring to Jesus. Let's go to Acts 7. Acts 7 and 35. Acts 7 and 35. Acts chapter 7 and 35. Again, brothers and sisters, we're talking about angels. The Holy Ghost comes in many forms. And one of those forms is the angels. So today we're talking about angels. The next one we're going to talk about the breath or the word. They are also spirit. But today we are just talking about the angels. This is Acts chapter 7. We're going to read verse 35. Acts chapter 7, we're going to read verse 35. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee ruler and judge? The same that God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hands of the angel which appeared unto him in a bush. You see who appeared unto him in a bush? An angel. It was not Jesus. Jesus was not in the bush. Jesus don't have to come to do anything. That's the purpose of the angels. They are created to serve him. So he don't have to come. He sent them. And they are the ones that come unto us. That's their job. So a lot of people would have thought, well, Jesus came to them and God came to them. Jesus don't, and nobody never seen God. That's number one. No man has ever seen God. The Father. No man has ever seen the Father. Chapter 23, Exodus 23. We're going to read 20 to 23. Exodus 23, we're going to read 20 to 23. This is what it says. This is Jesus. He says, Behold, I sent an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into a place which I have prepared. So God is saying, Jesus is saying, I, I will send an angel before you to lead you into this place that I want you to go. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. So Jesus is saying, do not provoke this angel that is going to lead you in the way, because he will not pardon your sins or your transgression. Do not provoke him, because my name, which is Jesus, is in his mouth. 
That's why I told you, brothers and sisters, the angels speak first person. Whatever Jesus say, whatever the angel, um, Jesus or God say, that's the same thing the angels have to say. They got to speak first person. Again, verse 21, it says, Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgression or your sins. For my name is in his mouth. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. So he will say, if you will obey the angels and do all that I, Jesus, say, because remember again, brothers and sisters, the angel is speaking as they are Jesus. But you know the angels is just the angels. They are not Jesus. But they have to speak first person. They only speak that which they was told to speak. So when they speak, it's just as if Jesus himself is speaking. Because they speak first person. Verse 23. For my angel shall go before you and bring you into the land of the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and I will cut them off. So you see here, brothers and sisters, the angels is the one that is leading the children of Israel. It's not Jesus himself. It's the angels. They are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Angels, the Comforter, the Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, these are all the titles that an angel has. All right? These are all the titles that an angel has. Let's go to Isaiah 63. So we see, brothers and sisters, there is not someone that is living inside of you. There are, there is no one inside of anyone. When you die, no one comes out of you and go anywhere. That is cartoon. That is Hollywood. That is Disney. Isaiah 63, we're going to read 7 to 14. Isaiah 63, we're going to read verse 7 to verse 14. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to, to all that the Lord has bestowed upon us and the great goodness towards the house of Israel which he had bestowed on us according to his mercies and according to his multitude of loving kindness. For he said, surely they are my people. Jesus is referring to us, Israel. He says, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. You can remember, this whole Bible, Jesus is always talking to the children of Israel. You can remember, he is the God of the Jews, to the God of the Jews, which is our ancestors. Jesus came to us only because we are the one that God chose to preach the gospel to the rest of the world, to bring the rest of the world to him. He chose Israel. For whatever reason, he chose Israel. Verse 9, in all the affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. See, the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in, in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and vexed the Holy Spirit. So here what it says, the children of Israel rebelled because, you know, when they went into the wilderness, they start disobeying God. So hear what God said. They rebel and vex the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the same angel. Because remember, he, I read earlier, he said, do not vex the angels because he will not pardon their sins. Because remember, God already told, told that angel, he already has order what to do if these people start sinning against him. He already has orders what to do. So he says, verse 10, he said, But they rebel and vex his holy spirits, which is the angels. Therefore he turn and be their enemies. Who turn and be their enemies? The Holy Spirit. 
the angel that was set before them. He turned and he beat it and then he be became the enemies and he fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea? Which shepherd of his flocks? Let me see if I'm going too far. No, verse 11 again. Then he remembered the days of old and, Mo and Moses and his people saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea? with the shepherd of his flock. Where is he that put his Holy Spirit with them, that led them by the right, you see the Holy Spirit that led them by the right hand of Moses and his glorious arm, dividing the waters before them to make himself an everlasting name. So remember the angel is the one that divided the Red Sea for Moses them. Because remember, even though Moses is the one that had the staff and he was doing you know what God told him to do the angel was doing the work the angels held up that sea and the, the sea stand up because angel works for God remember they are there to do his will this is verse 13 the angel that led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble and the beast goeth down into the valley. The Spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So did, so did thou lead thou people to make thyself a glorious name. So you see, brothers and sisters, the angels is the one that lead Moses and the children of Israel out of Egypt into the wilderness through the Red Sea. The angels. Revelation 22, we're going to read 1 to 6 and then 16. Revelation 22, we're going to read verse 1 to verse 6 and then 16. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielding her fruits every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. And there shall be no, no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God hath given them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto him, unto me, These sayings are fruitful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. You hear what um, this, this verse 6 says? Listen again what it says. And he said unto me, These sayings are fruitful, faithful, and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets, listen, the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Who did he send? He sent the angels. To show unto the servants the things which must shortly be done. The angels as also the comforter. That's the same comforter. The angels, the same Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Truth. That's the angels, brothers and sisters. That's the angels. Let's go. Verse 16. I, Jesus have sent my angels to testify unto these things into the churches. You hear what he said? <laughs> I, Jesus, this is Jesus himself speaking. This is Revelation 22 and 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel 
to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So the angels, brothers and sisters, is the one that brings the word. They are the comforter. It's not, no, it's not a, some spirit that came out of God or out of Jesus. It's not no third person in the God family. The book says there are three that bears record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And the three is on one accord. So the Father, we know who the Father is. The Word, we know that's Jesus. And the Holy Ghost, which is the angels. The angels is the Holy Ghost. There are three that bears record in heaven. The Father, the Word, who is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. It doesn't mean that they are inside of each other. It means that they are on one accord, one agenda, one message, one word, one gospel. That's what it means. It means they are on one accord. It doesn't mean they are one, meaning they are inside of each other. That's not what it's talking about. They are on one accord, these three. And they are three individuals. The Father, Jesus, and the angels, they work together, right? They work together. So this Trinity doctrine is also Hollywood. It's also Disney. It's also cartoon. There's no such thing as a Trinity. That's a pagan teaching. It's not no three people in the God family. It's only two. The Father and the Son. The angels are not God. They are serving spirits. That's it. The angels are not God. They are only serving spirits. Let me show you. Let me see. John, 1 John 5 and 7. Let's go to 1 John 5 and 7. 1 John 5 and 7. This is... The scripture that I just quoted, 1 John 5, verse 7. For there are three that bears record in heaven. Listen what it said. Notice that it didn't say there are three gods in heaven. Notice that it did not say there are three gods in heaven. It said there are three that bears record in heaven, meaning there are three that bears witness in heaven. If, if someone else was sitting next to me, it will be two that bears record or two that bears witness because there are two of us that's bearing witness to what is going on. So here it's saying there are three that bears record in heaven, right? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. It does not mean they are in each other. It only means that they are on one accord. They are on one accord. Right? And these three is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, which is the holy angels. It's not a third part of the Godhead, because the angels, again, brothers and sisters, they are not gods. They are only angels. They were created to serve God. They're not created to be gods. So hopefully that cleared that hope that Trinity doctrine up. Because a lot of these churches out there is preaching the Trinity, the Trinity doctrine or the Trinity network. Or there's no such thing as the Trinity. God is not no Trinity. The Father, the Word, who is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, which is the angels, because remember the angel works for God. That's it. Let's go to 1 John. But this is not the one that I'm looking for. 1 John 2 and 22. 1 John 2 and 22. We're going to read 22 and 23. 1 John 2, 22 and 23. Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Where is the other one? Notice that it, didn't, it, it don't have no other one here. It just have the Father and the Son. 
So where is the third party of this trinity? There's no such thing as trinity, brothers and sisters. The trinity doctrine is a pagan teaching. This thing came from the Catholic Church. That's why they just be making the sign of the cross, this Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's a pagan teaching. It is not scriptural. It is not doctrine. It is tradition. God is not Trinity. Jesus is not Trinity. And the Godhead has no Trinity in it also. Verse 22 again. Who is a liar? But he that denied that Jesus is the Christ. He is an antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Notice it didn't say another one, the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost is not in the God family. Whosoever denied the Son, the same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Where is the third one? There has no third one of the Godhead. No third one. There's no such thing as Trinity. Trinity is a pagan teaching. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 8 and 6. 1 Corinthians 8 and 6. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So listen what 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6 says. Listen what it says. And see, brothers and sisters, if you, if you can hear a third one in here. Listen what it says. It says, unto us there is one God, the Father. Unto us there is one God who is the Father, in whom all things are all things, and in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So <laughs> there's no third part here. There's no trinity here. There is no third part of the Godhead here. There is only two. It said there is one God and one Lord. The Father and the Son. There is no third part because there is no Trinity. There is no such thing as a Trinity. Trinity is a pagan teaching. Let's go to 1 Timothy 2 and 5. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. Again, listen what it says. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. I'm going to read it slow again. It says, There is one God and one mediator between us and God, the man Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is sitting between us and the Father, because remember, he is pleading our cause to his Father. He is the mediator. He is the intercessor. Because Jesus pleads our case to the Father. If Jesus move from between us and the Father, we all will be dead men and women. The Father will destroy all of us. That's why Jesus has to stand between us and the Father to plead our cause to the Father. Father, give them a break. Father, give them a chance. Father, don't destroy them. If Jesus moved from between us and the Father, creation is done. <laughs> it's, it's done. The Father will destroy us. Let's go to 1 John 1. Back to 1 John 1. We're going to read 1 to 3. 1 John 1, we're going to read 1 to 3. 1 John 1, we're going to read 1 to 3. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled for the word of life. 
for the life was manifested, for the life was manifested that we may have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. So listen what this is saying, brothers and sisters. This is talking about Jesus. But listen what he said. Where was Jesus? He said, that which was from the beginning. The beginning was before the world was. He's talking about Jesus. He's referring to Jesus. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested. The life was manifested because remember Christ was in his God form, his spiritual form in the beginning. And he had to come in the flesh. He had to be manifested in the flesh in order to come amongst man and walk and dwell with man. Right? In the flesh. Because remember he came to take away sin. And by flesh, sin came into the world. Adam. So he had to come in the flesh, Jesus, to get rid of sin. So, so we can he can reconcile us back to the Father. Right? So for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto that eternal life, which was with the Father, Jesus, and was manifested unto us. That that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. So I just read here about the Father and Jesus Christ. Where is the third part of the Trinity doctrine or the Trinity head or the Godhead? There is no third part of the Godhead. There is no Trinity. There is no Trinity. There is only the Father and the Son. I can't stress it enough. It's only the Father and the Son. Let's go to the second to last place. This is 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1 and 3. 1 Corinthians 1 and 3. It says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. So listen here. And see if you can hear a third part of this Godhead or the God family. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So, a lot of people also is saying, because they're saying that God the Father created a body and then God himself, the Father, took over that body to be amongst us. Brothers and sisters, no man has ever seen God in the shape, in the form, in nothing. The Father cannot deal with flesh and blood. So they are saying, basically they are saying that there is no son, there really is no son. That's what they are preaching. They are preaching that there really is no son. Because if they are saying that God, who is the Father, created the body, and he himself, which is the Father, took over the body and came in the flesh as the Son, they're saying that there is no Son. That can be no further from the truth. It is not the truth. It is misreading or misquoting of the Scriptures. There is a father. He is a separate entity from the son. They are two different beings. Two different. If the father were, was the son himself, is the father sitting on his own right hand? The scripture tell you that the son or the Lord or Jesus is sitting on the right hand of his father giving intercession for us. 
The scripture tells you that Jesus is the mediator between us and the Father. How in the world can the Father be the same Son? And this is ludicrous. How in the world can the Father be the Son? The Father cannot be the Son. The Father is the Father and the Son is the Son. Oh, my, 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 my. Verse 3 again. It says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is two different entities. That's God our Father and Jesus Christ his Son, which is our, our big brother. That's our big brother because that is the first of his God family. That's the first of the God family. He is the first that was that came from the dead and went back into the God family. And in the end, we are going to be into the God family because then we are going to be in the spirit being, spirit form. We are really going to be in his image and likeness. Let's go to John 17. John 17. So don't listen to these preachers who say that yes, they say it is one God, but they, they, they don't understand that there is two different entities, two different spirit, two different beings, the Father and the Son. They think that the Father is the Son. No, the Father cannot be the Son. The Father cannot be the Son. The Son cannot be the Father. They're two different people, two different beings. And then the scripture also talks about God is spirit. And he that worship God, worship him in spirit and truth. Why do the, spirit, the, the scriptures say that God is the spirit? And he that worship God, worship him in spirit and in truth. Listen. Carefully, brothers and sisters. The reason why the scriptures refer to God the Father as spirit, and we that worship him, worship him in spirit, is because no man has ever seen the Father. So to us, he is spirit because we never seen him. We only heard of him. He is spirit to us because we have never seen. We're worshiping a God that we have never seen. We are worshiping a God that we have never seen. So of course to us, he is spirit because we never seen him. <laughs> That's why he is spirit. So we that worship him, worship him in spirit, which is faith. We worship him in faith. We worship him in spirit. Because we never saw him. So we are just trusting that he, there is a father. That's why the scripture referred to him as spirit. And we that worship him, worship him in spirit. Because we are worshiping something or someone that we have never met, never seen with our eyes. The only one that we have seen is Jesus Christ, the son of the one that we have never seen. If he is spirit, how is Jesus sitting on his right hand? How is he sitting on his throne? He is only spirit, brothers and sisters, because we've never seen him. The angels them see him. Jesus see him. We have never seen him with our eyes. That's why he is spirit to us. So John 17, we're going to read 11 and then 21 to 23. John 17, we're going to read 11 and then 21 to 23. Verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. This is Jesus speaking. He is He's communicating with his father. 
and he's telling his father about the disciples that the father gave him. Because remember, the Bible says, no man can come in unto the son unless the father draw them to the son. No man coming unto the son unless the father draw them unto the son. So these disciples, they are not Jesus' disciples. They are the fathers. They are the fathers. So listen what it says, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world. This is Jesus speaking. But these are in the world. He's, he was referring to the disciples. And I come to thee, holy father. So this is learning something on the way of learning something also. This is what Jesus said. I come to thee, holy father. So there is a particular person on this earth that they call holy father, which is the, the Pope. Brothers and sisters, the Pope is not holy father. He cannot be holy father. The Pope is a man just like me and you. He eat, sleep, take a dump, he go to the bathroom, he stinks if he don't take a shower, just like me and you. He cannot be Holy Father. There is only one Holy Father, and that is God the Father. There is only one Holy Father, and that is God. So these people who is referring to the Pope as Holy Father, they are transgressing or they are they are shaming or embarrassing the Father. They are embarrassing the Father because the Pope, no man, as a matter of fact, can be the Holy Father. There is only one Holy Father and that is the Father himself, which is God. All right? So if you are referring to the, 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 the Pope as Holy Father, Brothers and sisters, I urge you to quit. I urge you to stop. I urge you to quit. I urge you to stop. The Pope cannot be Holy Father. He used the bathroom just like me and you. If you don't take a shower, he will stink just like me and you. He has to sleep just like me and you. He cannot be the Holy Father. All right? Hmm. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. So listen here carefully what this says. Jesus is telling the Father, the men that you gave me, which is the disciples, let them be one as me and you, Father, are one. So, we know that these, Jesus had 12 disciples. So, how can they be one, just like Jesus and his father is one? Remember, Jesus is not referring to let the disciples go inside of each other. You know, brothers and sisters, common sense. He said, let they be one as me and you, father, are one. Meaning, let them be at one accord. One accord. Let them work together. Just like when somebody get married. It says, you and your wife are one. The husband and wife is one. Let the husband leave his wife and leave his, his parents and cling to his wife and they both shall be one. It doesn't mean that the husband and the wife is inside of each other. It means let them be at one accord. One accord. Evenly yoke. One accord. So he says, let those disciples, Father, be as one. May they be at one as we are one. So here you see clearly, brothers and sisters, that there is not one in the Godhead. There is two in the God family. There is one head and one member of the body, which is Jesus Christ. One head, which is the ultimate head, which is God the Father. He is the most high. 
He is the highest. Right? Let them be one as we, Father, are one. Verse 21 to 23 is going to tell you the same thing again. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. You hear that? That they, disciples, may be one, meaning one accord. It does not mean that they are inside of each other. One accord. So the Trinity doctrine, they say that God is the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and they are one person, Trinity. That is incorrect. Is incorrect. It only means that they are on one accord. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which is the angel, they work together. So the same thing that he's saying for the disciples, let them be one. Let them work together. Right? Let them work together. Verse 21 again. That they, they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them. That they may be one as we are one. It keeps telling you the same thing. It's not teaching a trinity doctrine. It's just merely saying, let them be on one accord, just as me and you, Father, is on one accord. Verse 23, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, say it again, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me. Let's go to Jeremiah 32 and 39. Jeremiah 32 and 39. Jeremiah 32 and 39. We have to get away from this Trinity doctrine. All these big scholars, big preachers, scholars, is all they're teaching a Trinity doctrine. If these people are scholars, how, why are they not reading the scriptures? Why they can't see the scriptures? It's, it's not hidden. Jeremiah 32 and 39. Let me see if this is one of them. Jeremiah 32 and 39. And I will give them one heart and one and one way that they may fear me forever. <laughs> you know what he said? I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. So you know what he said? He will give them one heart, meaning let them be on one accord, one agenda. Give them one heart and one mind. It does not mean, again, brothers and sisters, that they are inside of each other. There is nothing or no one inside of anyone. There is no one inside of anyone. There is no other person living inside of you. First Peter 3, we're going to read 8 and 9. First Peter 3, we're going to read 8 and 9. First Peter 3, we're going to read 8 and 9. And this is the last one. First Peter 3, we're going to read 8 and 9. And the stone of stumbling and a rock of up offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. All of this title, brothers and sisters, is about us, the Israelites, the Jews of this Bible. All of this that I'm reading here is about us, our ancestors, the Negroes, the, tri the, the children of the 12 tribes of Israel, the stock of Abraham. This is what he says. But we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, <clears throat> a peculiar people that you may show forth <clears throat> excuse me, the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
Brothers and sisters, again, the Holy Ghost comes in many forms. Depends on what you're reading, the context of what you're reading. It can either be the angel, it can either be the breath that you breathe, and it can either be the words that you're reading. They are also the Holy Ghost, the Holy Scripture, the Holy Word, or the Spirit. The angels can either be the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter. These are titles an angel has. Because remember, they are also serving spirit or ministering spirit or flaming fire. Because remember, the angels were created, brothers and sisters, to serve God. They are created to serve him. They are serving spirit. They are ministering spirit. That's what they are. I hope that we had some understanding from the scriptures, brothers and sisters. Again, there is no such thing as a trinity doctrine. That's a pagan teaching. From just saying it's a lie. Trinity doctrine is a lie. There is no such thing as God is Trinity. That's just not the truth. Right? So again, brothers and sisters, one love. I hope that you had some understanding. And I'm going to have two other parts to this particular lesson. This is not the black history lesson that I, that I spoke about earlier that I'm bringing, putting together. It's, um, it's still in the making. It's going to have part, you know, four parts. But this is about the angels, the, um, the Holy Ghost. So the next one I'm going to bring is either the breath or the word to show you that there also is the Holy Spirit or the, the, the ghost. Anyway, peace in Jesus' name, one love, and you enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Peace out.